Good afternoon, everyone. I'm the general counsel of eDreams at EGO, the largest European online travel agency with more than 1,000 employees in Europe, serving more than 18 million customers in 46 markets. I'm here today to discuss a very important topic of our industry. But this is a side of topic that everybody knows, but no one really wants to discuss because it is strategically embarrassing. We all know we have an elephant in the room, and it happens to be that this elephant is just sitting in the middle of the entrance room of the online business, the search engine results page. We have an elephant in the SERP. We know it. And in addition, if you think about the fact that this elephant is still growing, and our room is shrinking due to the mobile shift, and might even disappear with voice-based searches, I think that we can all agree that we have a major issue. So we can hide it, but let's talk about it. And we have today, with my presence, I'm not, let's say, the usual animal that you hear on stage, but we have a kind of legal regulatory update because a lot of things are happening, not only in Europe, that might change the rules of the game in one, two, three, four years. I cannot predict, but there are a lot of things going on. First of all, I would like to remind that this is not only an eco uh, a travel uh, industry issue. This is much broader than that. This is an e-commerce issue. We have this pachyderm present in search on jobs, in, in searches on shopping, or local searches. In the travel space, there is a massive presence in all the verticals, hotels, vacation rentals, flights. I recently heard that some tests were done in car rentals too. And it is always the same trend. So you have ad first, usually it's AdWords. Then you have the Google travel unit. And what you see here are the screenshots that usually 95% of internet users are seeing at first sight. The generic results are not visible at first sight. They are below the fold. What does that mean for the travel space? It means today that our customers on the internet are overwhelmed by advertising. In addition to that, those advertisings, not only the travel units, are not clearly displayed as such. They are confused. They don't really know if it's ad or info. And then last point is that a lot of competitors lose visibility. They are demoted. They disappear. This is changing the market structure. This is changing consumers' behavior. Recent analysis done based on data of Jamshot show that 55% of searches end in no-click, which means that people, when they land on the SERP, either find the answer directly or go on Google-owned properties. 55% of the mobile traffic today. And it seems that this number is increasing. So Google is like acting like an online vertex sucking all the internet traffic in reality. This is what we call also the effect of the walled garden. The problem with walls is that it creates, it creates barriers to entry. Just think today in the travel area of a young entrepreneur that has a great idea, comparing different travel products, innovative, good for consumers. But the first question that this young entrepreneur will have is, how can I make my business visible on the web? The second one will probably be, how can I compete and grow on the merits? And the third one will be, I need to find investors to fund my project, to support me. But how can I find these investors who know that I will have to compete head-to-head -head with Google Travel Units? It creates very high hurdles. And the problem of very high hurdles, it's the first thing that it's hurting, that is hurted, is innovation. And when innovation is lessened, 
is blocked, then the market suffers, then the consumers ultimately suffer. The economics literature is very clear on that. And you have the professor Fiona, Fiona Scott Morton that clearly explains in the digital area how this is functioning. First, there is a consumer bias, meaning that consumers stay in the environment created by the big platform. It means that he takes the attractive framework, he does not scroll down, he does not go to the second page, he stays in the first environment visible. Then also what happens is that the consumer experience deteriorates. We talk a lot about technology, artificial intelligence, but basically what happens is that the experience deteriorates. You have more ads, less privacy, less relevant results. This happens too. And then the third problem is that the innovation is channeled in the direction the dominant platform prefers. If I take back the example of my young entrepreneur, what does that mean? Is that he will probably not find an investor to support him. But investors might fund companies that will try to solve problems for Google in the travel space with a potential buyout at the end. So innovation, in reality, goes in the direction of the platform. This is what the literature in uh, economics uh, uh, tells us. If you look at the market, what are the new entrants? I would say the significant ones. I try to take the big ones. You see that after 2011 in the US, there is nothing really significant that happens. We have exactly the same trend in Europe. After 2012, nothing really big happens. Markets, brands, sorry, that are uh, known today by consumers. And we think that the digital market is a fast market where brands can be built rapidly. We don't see a lot of that today, and it matches with the entry, the massive entry, of the Google travel units on our market. So it sends a signal. And the competition authorities are working on that. And what they tell us is that there is probably something here happening. First, in the shopping case, The European Commission in 2017 said Google abused its market dominance as a search engine by promoting its own comparison shopping in its search results, demoting those of competitors. You might argue, this is the shopping area, this is not the travel. Well, in India, one year after, you have exactly the same reasoning for the Google Flights unit. This is the same. Same principles are applied. And now, In the US, you have 50 attorney generals that have decided to launch a, a probe, bipartisan probe, quite exceptional thing, against Google. And if you look at what the attorney general of the District of Columbia says, it's very clear, and you see the direction of this investigation. It used to be a day when we searched Google that we would be presented with links unrelated to Google business. Very compelling analysis suggests that an overwhelming number of query responses relate to Google business and or advertisers that pay for that slot. Which means two things. The US investigation will be focused on the SEO disappearance, and second, the favoring by Google of its own product. So everything goes in the same direction in reality. And this is a big investigation. What happened in the US is big. And It's not because nothing happened before that in the future, in the years to come, uh, this will be the same. The Attorney General of the Antitrust Division, Mackandel Ryan, remember that the US has a long history of trust busting in emerging and technologically advanced markets, meaning that sometimes it takes time. This is a complex matter. We have to take time. We need to gather data. We need to see the influence of the market. But ultimately, at the end, we take the necessary actions to restore competition. In Europe, this is the same that is happening, more advanced. We have the shopping case, the appeal. In less than four months, there will be a hearing before the Court of Justice. In 95% of, of, case, of cases, the European Court of Justice confirms the decision of the Commission. So the decision that I mentioned of 2017 will be confirmed, probably, statistically, 95% of chances in a year. Non-compliant case against Google for the shopping case. 
because now the Commission is losing patience. And Margaret Vestager at the Web Summit in Lisbon two weeks ago said, I'm losing patience. I don't see any efficient remedies to restore competition. So, might open a non-compliance case. An additional case, not only in the travel verticals, might be open also by the Commission because Margaret Vestager is, uh, uh, really wants to put an end to those practices. But the authorities today know that investigation, okay, the problem of this is that you need to do that on a case-by-case -case basis. It's very long, you need to gather data. So they think about a mix of regulation and, sorry, investigation and regulation. It will be a mix. And on the regulatory side, we have already an idea of two regulations that will probably happen in Europe. The first one will be a ban of self-referencing. So this is already on the table. Germany is pretty well advanced on this type of uh, regulations. And Margaret Vestager publicly mentioned that possibility. In the travel area, we have a lot of experience of these type of things. Look, think about the GDS market. Uh, we had airlines favoring their own content. They, we put a specific, well-targeted regulation to solve the issue. And now it is solved. There will be also a Digital Services Act. This has been announced by Ursula von der Leyen, the President of the Commission, and this will regulate the search engines. It's broader than competition only. The question is, today, this is an advertising company that is here to monetize an audience that defines how we get access to information. I'm not sure that this is reasonable and sustainable as a position. So this uh, regulation will manage this. And you can have a sense of things that could be done. Framing the ad space, limiting, putting the advertising in a corner, in a place that, is clearly uh, that we can clearly identify, and keeping the organic results prominent so that people can still get access to the variety of the market and to information. This is just an example. Huh? It's just to say that the two principles we, that we will work on are basically those ones. Everywhere in the world, in reality, authorities are working on that because I mentioned Europe and the USA, but you have the same thing happening in Japan, in Australia, with authorities working on that, in France, in Sweden, in the United Kingdom. I did not mention, but this is the last solution, the extreme one. If we are not able to find solution to solve this problem, there is still the possibility to break up. And this is a tool at disposal of competition authorities. It has always been. And they use it if they have to. I'm not sure we need to get to that extreme, but this is clearly on the table. So I'll finish with this endless quote and timeless quote from the Senator John Chairman, who created antitrust law, was the author of antitrust law, to remind that there is no place for private monopolies on the long term. And the antitrust authorities will stay true to that vision, and it is also up to each and every one of us to make sure that the necessary changes will happen. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Guillaume Tassonier, Idrims Odigia.